Hey guys, I want to let you know that uh, I actually recorded this episode at work, which is why my tone is a little bit low and I'm not really as excited as I would like to be. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of just why the I'm talking really, really quietly and hopefully you guys will enjoy it anyway, but if not, then it is what it is. I, I completely understand. So uh, thank you so much, guys, and hope you enjoy the episode. What's up, everybody? Welcome to SJM Podcast. I'm your host, Diego Call. I'm talking about the Europa League final coming up tonight um hopefully it's gonna be a good one uh, i have a feeling it's gonna be a pretty interesting game because you know for the first time in a long time both the europa league final and the champions league final um feature you know teams from the exact same league and actually now that i think about it, it might be the first time in history i probably should fact check that but i'm not 100 percent sure but regardless it's it's a huge thing for all four teams in the two major finals to be from the same exact league um i think it's gonna be you know a couple of very interesting Finals, but I will be talking about the Champions League in a, in a future episode in the next couple of days. Today's gonna be all about the Europa League final, and I think, like I said, it's, I think it's gonna be a pretty good game. Um, I'm gonna give my my score predictions a little bit later on in this episode, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the the teams themselves. All right, these are two teams that I guess you could say in some ways are evenly matched, in other ways they are as opposite as they could possibly be. Um, from a disciplinary point of view. I would say Arsenal are probably light years ahead of them. And what I mean by that is whenever I see Unai Emery, I kind of get the feeling that his players believe in him or his players are 100% behind him. Whereas when I look at Maurizio Sarri with Chelsea, it just kind of seems like half of those players believe that they're better than the manager will ever be. And I can I can understand that in some ways. For example, all right, what has is, what is Maurizio Sarri ever won? Absolutely nothing. He's literally never won anything. Um... So, I mean, it's easy for a player like Eden Hazard, who is one of the top, easily one of the top ten players in the world, possibly one of the best, one of the top five when he's, when he's playing well, when he's playing at the peak of his condition. Um, it's easy for somebody like that to look down on a guy like Sarri. It's easy for somebody like David Luiz, who isn't necessarily the best defender in the world, but he's won, a, you know, he's, he's won so much with Chelsea. He's won a lot with PSG as well. So, I mean, it's easy for these kind of players to believe that they're better than the manager and kind of lack the respect towards him. And I think that was kind of headlined by Kepa in the Carabao Cup final against Man City when he just 100% 100% disobeyed um, Saturday's decision to take him off after he was apparently faking an injury, um, faking a cramp. And, uh, yeah, so I think that just kind of shows that when it comes down to it, Chelsea's players don't necessarily respect Sarri the way that they should because, you know, what what a manager says is what a manager, is what should happen. You know what I mean? Like, he what he says goes. Um, and it's not the way it works at Chelsea. It hasn't really worked like that for a long time, really, if you think about it. Because, I mean, Antonio Conte, like, he had his issues with the board. He had his issues with Abramovich. He had his issues with some of the players. But at the end of the day, whatever he says, duh, you know, whatever he says is going to happen. Like, he is going to make the decisions when it comes to the players that are on the pitch and who's going to come off. And if you don't respect them, he's going to rip your head off. Whereas I don't think that Sutter really has that because, I, of course, he was he was extremely pissed off at Kepa when that was happening. But I think he kind of lacked the balls kind of to force him off the pitch. Um, whereas I think that's something that you wouldn't see happen at Arsenal. You know, you see... Unai Emery, he's won three Europa Leagues, I think it is, with Sevilla. Three in a row, I think it was, actually. So, I mean, he has the pedigree of somebody who's won one of the major competitions in Europe. He has the pedigree of being one of the top managers in the sport. Like, if you put him in a huge team, of course, he was with PSG for a while, and that didn't really, that didn't really go very well. But if you put him, you know, at, like, a Chelsea, you put him at... A city, he's gonna do very, very well. That's just, in my opinion, of course, that could be completely wrong, but I think uh, there's there's no reason to believe that he wouldn't do a very good job. But moving on, um, when it comes to the tactical point of view, I think that this is gonna be a very, very, very interesting match. Um, Saturday, I think, is gonna try to play his usual style, which is balls to the wall, moving forward, um, offensive football. Whereas I think that Unai Emery, I'm not gonna say he's, how can I put this? I will say he is tech, more tactically sound. I will say that he's a bit more intelligent when it comes to mixing up his approach. Um, I think that's going to come in handy in this match because 
something that you really can't take into con- you you can't really account for is how much pressure is going to be on these players. Now, for Arsenal, there's probably more if you think about it because if they win this match, they're going to be in the Champions League next season. If they don't, they're stuck in the Europa League next season as well. If Chelsea lose, they don't have that issue. All they have to, the only issue they have is that, of course, is a chance to win a major trophy, and um, you know, it's just that's pretty much it. That's the only, that's the only pressure they have on them is the opportunity to win a major trophy. And if they don't do that, then I guess you could say no big deal. But of course, they want to win it because you know it's the it would be the only major trophy they've won this season, and it'd be a great chance for Saturday himself to you know kind of get himself that 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 trophy pedigree and it's looking like he's going to be going to Juventus possibly if he's able to come to a deal with Chelsea um whether that happens we'll have to see but you know as of right now this is his opportunity to win his first major trophy and of course doing so with Chelsea to make it to where he was his season wasn't necessarily a failure because of course a team like Chelsea they want to win the league a team like Chelsea want to go deep in the Champions League uh, well, of course, they weren't in the Champions League this season, but you know you get the picture. Like they, they have much bigger ambitions than winning the Europa League, but winning that would be, in some ways, you know, a redeeming factor for this season. Um, and it could be a great send off for Eden Hazard if he does end up going to, uh, going to Real Madrid, and just in general, it'd be a, a a great way for Chelsea to end the season. Same of course with Arsenal, but like I said, there's a lot more riding on this for Arsenal. Um, who do I think is gonna win? Well, I think a lot of that depends on who wins the tactical battle, of course, that's that's obvious, but what I mean by that is, is Saturday's game going to be able to overpower Arsenal? Because if you look at their strengths, all right, Chelsea have a okay defense, an okay defense, I'm not going to say it's, you know, any good, it's, it's, it's okay, you know, Kepa, he's a okay goal, he's a good goalkeeper, but we're talking about, you know, I'm going to say okay as in, like, he's not, he's no Allison. he's no... Courtois, he's no David De Gea when he's not being a dork. Uh, <laughs> dork, well, that's just well, that's garbage insult. Anyway, um, he's not David De Gea when he's you know making these huge mistakes. Um, he's no Handanovic. You do get the picture. He's not one of the best goalkeepers in the world, but he's a he's a very good young goalkeeper. Um, left back, you know, Marcus Alonso, so he's okay. He's nothing special, but he's he's good. David Luiz, he's okay, good. Um, Aspiliqueta is a very, very good defender. He's undersized, but he can kind of fix that with his intelligence and his ability to read the game. Um, right back, you know, they're lacking there. They are lacking there. Zapacosta's not a bad player, but he's nothing special. Um, midfield, that's where that's where I think Chelsea are a bit better than Arsenal because Jorginho, we know he's a, he's a really good player if he has time, if he has space, and he's a very, very good player. Um, they've kind of figured him out a little bit, and I think that might be an issue for him in this match because he tends to get a lot of he gets pressured a lot because they know that Saturday loves him being the playmaker. So if they if, if Arsenal can pressure him a little bit they're gonna have I think a lot of success. Um of course there's Kovacic as well. There's Loftus Cheek. Um I think I, there's of course Angolo Kante, the one of the best midfielders in the world. And then of course on the wings there's Pedro, there's Willian and up front they have they have Giroud. <laughs> um who else do they have? Who's their damn main striker? Giroud? Oh, yeah, and Gonzalo Higuain. That's right. Yeah, so uh, a couple of garbage strikers. Um, look at Arsenal. Their defense is, without a doubt, worse than Chelsea's. There's just no doubt about that. You know, Mustafi, um, <laughs> Koscielny, <laughs> Bellerin. Oh, my God, Bellerin. What a piece of shit that guy is. Like, not as a human being, but, I mean, as a player. Like, he's got as much pace as a human being can possibly have, but his just his technical skills are just nowhere near what they should be, which is fun of weird, because, you know, you're, you would expect a lot better from a from a Spanish player, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, when it comes to the left back, of course, they have Kovacniac, who isn't exactly great. Um, he's not bad, but he's not great. And in midfield, I think this is, this is of course, what the game's going to be won and lost, but, I mean, I think that Chelsea on paper are better in midfield, you know, Arsenal have a good player like Mkhitaryan, who unfortunately looks like he's not going to be going to the game because there's issues between Armenia and um, Azerbaijan, so it's a security risk for him to go. I don't know if that's 100% confirmed if he's going if he isn't going to miss it if he is going to miss the game or not, but I sincerely hope not for him. Um, if I can be completely honest with you guys, you know, as a United fan, um, when the Sanchez Mkhitaryan deal was was announced, I was I had mixed emotions, and I was extremely happy because I figured 
we're getting one of the best players in England in Alexis Sanchez, but it just never really worked out. So at the end of the day, if I had to, you know, looking back on it, I probably would have preferred to keep McTarian, to be honest with you, because sure, there were times where he wasn't really, where he wasn't playing as well as he should. It kind of seemed like he was a little bit afraid or he wasn't, he was just kind of, he found himself locked in the shadows, I guess you could say. Like he, he was just kind of shackled by maybe a weakness mentally or something like that, but when he was on, he was one of the, he was arguably the best player in the team quite a, you know, for like a season or two there, so I think that, um, I think it's a shame that we lost him, uh, I think that maybe if he'd have been under Ollie, then maybe things would have been a little bit better for him, he would have been a bit more free-flowing, so it would have helped his game a little bit, but, you know, for Arsenal, we've seen some glimpses of what a good player he, can, he is, and what a good player he can still be moving forward, and if they if he doesn't show up, then that's going to be a big loss for them because that means that you know the midfield is going to be Granit Xhaka, which is you know just not good. Um, you know Ramsey, his last game in Arsenal shirt probably. Well, not probably. It's official. This is this is the last Arsenal match he'll he'll play. So of course I'm sure he wants to he wants to sign off with a big win. Uh, you know, the, I guess you can kind of say like the the, the only the only position. And maybe even Burn, Burn Leno might be better than Kepa, you know, the goalkeeper. But the only position that you can really confidently say that Arsenal are far superior to Chelsea is up front. Um, of course, Obama Young and Lacazette, as a combination, are by far better than Giroud and Higuain. Like Higuain, if you just said that a couple years ago, Higuain would have been by far, um, well, I wouldn't say by, by far better than them, but I would say he's he would definitely have been on par with with uh with Aubameyang but as of right now Aubameyang is just so much better than him like he's he actually moves he actually is able to finish and he's not just a fat guy who's just kind of sitting there up front and hoping hoping to to get a killer pass and you know finish with a nice little finish but let's just be real like he going in at this point in his career he's he's nowhere near the player that uh that he once was and he doesn't seem like he's even interested really in actually playing, he complains a lot. He gets mad at his teammates a lot, but he doesn't really do much to uh, get himself involved with the game. So, I think that uh, up front, you know, there's absolutely no doubt. He, um, Aubameyang and Lacazette are bar far, are by far better than the the two strikers that Chelsea have at their disposal. Um, who's gonna actually win this game though? Now, um, of course, like I just said, Chelsea are without a doubt the better team on paper. But what I think is going to be the difference maker here is going to be the fact that Unai Emery has been there. He's done that. Okay, he knows what it takes to win the Europa League. He's done it three times. Okay, he knows exactly what it takes to win major trophies. Saturday, he just doesn't. That's just the fact. You know, he just doesn't know how. He doesn't know what it's like. So, unless his players show up and carry him, I think that he's going to make some mistakes tactically. I think that Emery is going to get everything completely perfect. He's going to have his players playing in the exact perfect way. I think they're going to be counterattacking because of course we know Chelsea is going to be very offensive. They're going to leave a lot of space. That's what they always do. They leave a lot of space because Marco Alonso loves to bomb forward. Zappa Costa loves to bomb forward as well. Um and I think that that's going to be a big hole for them. But that's going to be that's going to leave a lot of holes in behind their defense because of course David Luiz he also tends to make a lot of mistakes when it comes to positioning. He kind of gets distracted. He moves forward quite a bit as well. Atspiliqueta really doesn't really do that as much, but he does occasionally make mistakes. And when you come, when they, of course it's like you know he's human, so it makes sense. It makes sense, but occasionally um, he can find himself overpowered. Um, by the strikers as well, and that's going to be very, very dangerous when you have to take into consideration that they're going to be playing up against, you know, Aubameyang, who's one of the start, one of the fastest players in the world, and of course Lacazette, who's very, very intelligent and is also pretty quick on his in his own right. So I just think that Arsenal, at the end of the day, are going to get the tactics right. They're going to outplay Chelsea, going to outwork Chelsea, and they're going to outsmart Chelsea. Um, that might I don't know if who's the favorite in this. I have to check the odds, but I would assume Chelsea are the favorites. Um, I saw a poll. Posted by the champ by by the official official Champions League Instagram, I think it was, and um, according to that, the, the the favorites not the not the Champions League it was the official UEFA page. It just seemed like everybody was picking Chelsea, or at least I think it was like sixty for Chelsea and forty percent for Arsenal. Which, you know, I could I could I could definitely see that, but I just think that Arsenal, they're gonna show up, and most importantly, this means a lot more to Arsenal than it does for Chelsea, because you know Chelsea. Over the past few years, they have actually won some major trophies. You know, they won the Premier League a couple years ago. Um, well, three years ago, I guess. Um, what else? You know, they they won a Champions League not too long ago. Arsenal haven't won anything 
That's really no. That's really of note. I mean, FA Cup, it's big, but it's really not that huge. You know what I mean? It's like a Europa League counts a lot more than the FA Cup. Um, so I would absolutely think that Arsenal, they need this a lot more than Chelsea does. I think they're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna see it on the pitch. A lot of these players are extremely hungry to actually win something, and I think that's gonna be very, very huge for Arsenal. I think that's gonna kind of drive them to want to win as much as possible. And uh, I think I'm gonna get the W. What kind of a, of a result am I thinking? Um, I think it kind of go two ways. Either it's going to be Arsenal holding them off and getting like a 1-0 or a 2-1 win, making it, you know, really, really close. Or I think it's going to be a 3-2 win for Arsenal. Um, I think that kind of depends, though, because the way I see it, it's going to be Chelsea dictating, I guess you could say, um, dictating play in the sense that they're going to have a lot of possession. They're going to be moving forward constantly. Uh, trying to get in behind, but they are going to leave a lot of space. So if Arsenal can counterattack the way I think that they are going to counterattack, then I really see them punishing them, and they could go on to score three goals. Um, but I will stick with the 2-1, just because I think that Emery's going to be a little bit more conservative. Saturday's going to leave some space, but he's not going to... I don't think Chelsea are going to be that stupid to to, uh, to blow a game... Like, to hugely blow a game like this, and I think their defenders are going to be a little bit more careful when it comes to positioning and uh, not being exposed on the... Not, not, being, not being too exposed on the counterattack because they do know that Obama Young and uh, Lacazette are very, very dangerous in those situations. And uh, one thing to take into consideration, you know, these are two teams that know each other extremely well. They play at least twice a season, and, uh, you know, tactically they know what the other one's going to do. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, I guess the, kind of the nut... the the wrench into my theory that not only my theory but the fact that they do play against each other consistently is the fact that both of these managers have only been here for uh, this season so they do know each other but they don't know quite as much as they would have known if you know it was Conte versus Wenger or anybody versus Wenger I guess because you know he did the same thing for the last 20 years basically so um yeah that's pretty much it so uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode if you did let me know in the comment section, hit the like button. Um, I do, as I've mentioned, probably you know twenty times now. I do want to get this stuff on like Podcast Republic on on iTunes and all that. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, subscribe if you want to. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for listening. And let me know uh, in the comment section on YouTube or on Instagram or all that stuff. You'll see the links in the description down below. Let me know who you think's gonna win and uh, who you want to win. For me personally, I guess I'll go ahead and end it like this is I want Arsenal to win because if Arsenal wins, that means that United uh, don't have to play the fucking annoying ass qualifying matches, which means that you basically have to have to take out very valuable time from your preseason to uh, to go qualify with these garbage matches. So hopefully Arsenal will win and give us a you know do us a favor there because I would put them in in the Champions League positions, which would make us basically, you know, the leading English team in the Europa League, which is just embarrassing, but it is what it is, you know. I'd rather I'd rather not have to play the qualifying matches than, than have to go through that torture. Anyway, guys, that is it. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you in the next episode.